the colon is full of bacteria. There are over 500 billion kinds of bacteria in the colon. It's, it's, it's a large, vast reservoir of bacteria. And they all have many functions of which we don't understand fully yet. Mm -hmm. But significantly they maintain, they help with absorption, secretion, transport of waste, etc., etc. Now, unfortunately, we are all susceptible to infections, be it a sore throat to more serious septicemia and so on and so forth. And the best way we have learned to treat them is through antibiotics. Now, ideally, if we can deliver the antibiotic to a site, let's say it's a chest infection, we deliver the antibiotic to the lungs directly, mm -hmm. or a kidney infection to the kidneys, then it would be wonderful. Right. Well, unfortunately, we don't. I mean, we all have to take most of the antibiotics either orally, predominantly, or into the vein. And, and the antibiotics then have effects on gut function. Right. Uh, one of the unfortunate side effects of the antibiotics is they tend to uh, uh, wipe out the colonic bacteria or a proportion of the bacteria. Now, Clostridium difficile is uh, normally present in the gut, but when we wipe out a number of other bacteria, this particular bug, which is resistant to most antibiotics, tends to overgrow. And once it overgrows and produces toxins, then we run into trouble and we can get diarrhea. Mm -hmm. And we did the method that, you know, Larry Brandt's group really pioneered. So we, the patients, um, uh, I think not the spouse, but I think uh, her living uh, friend was the donor. The daughter was going to be a donor, but she was unable to uh, provide stool. This is another issue. You have to provide stool. Yeah. Not anybody can have spontaneously provide stool. Some people have a regular habit, some people don't. And so whereas the partner was able to give us the stool sample, and we did the usual method, we, we, we uh, put in a grinder, uh, add water to it, and then make six alicots of it. Then we go down with the colonoscope into the colon. Um, Prior to the procedure, we also, I give some uh, Imodium or Loperamide to slow down gut motility. And then we deliver the stool, mostly in the right colon, this new prepared uh, stool. Yeah. And then we come out with the colonoscope. Um, and then we observe the patient for a day, but she was out of the hospital in two days. I've heard it sours. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's just dramatic you know, when you see this result. Interesting. I think that is one of the big risks, you know, if you don't screen the donor very well. Uh, second thing is, you know, we, we are not really looking at matching. Now, I'll give you my best example is, when, if you want to transfuse blood, you know, we do a simple, you know, blood group matching as one of the important criteria. Of course, we also screen the donor's blood for infection. So in this context, I think we, we're not doing any such matching and things like that. We don't know how best to match. Maybe blood group matching is still a reasonable thing to consider. But there are lots of unknown areas. People may argue, that, as you said, there are 600 cases that have been done. There have been no major issues, maybe one rare issue or whatever. But we still don't know. The jury is still out. We may be curing their C. diff colitis. But you know, there are reports, I believe there are two or three reports now, of people uh, developing uh, some arthritis which was not known beforehand. Uh, like RA, like non -RA? Well, it's unexplained arthritis. Now, we, they don't know whether this is purely coincidental mm -hmm. or whether this kind of um, infusion led to some change in bacteria which has now led to a new disorder. Well, how comfortable are we that, yes, we are relieving the problem in the short term, are we potentially setting ourselves for some long-term harm uh, or, or is it just purely coincidental? Yeah. So there are several institutions, for example, University of Chicago uh, is having a, a, a research uh, study that they're really beginning. One of the things that they're doing, um, interestingly enough, is they are, um, they are going to have only one or two donors. They're not going to take any donor who comes by. Yeah. So they're going to have a fixed two healthy donors uh, who are all well screened and so on and so forth. And so if they ever get a patient, 
then they will ask the donor to provide this tool. So in that way, there is much better control in, in what is likely to happen, I think. Because here, in the currently, you know, we're using relatives and spouses and or friends or whatever to the Which name. seems to make it more acceptable for the patient. Right. So that's what I think is, is the current thing. So we don't know which way it's going to go, but I think there is a lot more to learn. But the data is data. I mean, it is just outstanding. I mean, the what the improvement is.